I didn't know it was the end of my career, but shortly after I did. I'm Tyler. Super T. One of the earlier, uh, I guess, they would maybe call us godfathers of, of the bike freeride uh, era. My personal greatest achievements in mountain biking uh, was not dying, um, was uh, winning the first uh, ultimate freeride challenge, uh, winning a Red Bull Rampage, uh, numerous uh, video feats, uh, Cranked and North Shore Extremes, Jib, Union, and then the drop-in uh, TV series, uh, two seasons on there. I, I sort of had a preemptive notion that I was headed in a, in a successful direction in mountain biking, and then, and then things were, were spurring off in, in multiple directions. Uh, and there was, I mean, we were filming this commercial with Nike with Lance Armstrong at the time, so I, I, I quit my day job and, and just focused on mountain biking. I felt pretty much unstoppable at the time. I, I hadn't experienced injuries. And then there was, you know, there was Red Bull, a trip to Utah before that, that, that sealed the deal to go to Rampage. Uh, and, and then video people uh, following Rampage win. Uh, so I started filming with Cranked after that and, and things were, were happening. It was, it, was, it was the time to shine. Uh, it's strange, uh, entering the first Rampage, I, I was such an adolescent in the sport and all of a sudden I'm, I'm surrounded by the vast majority of some of my idols. Uh, and I felt as like such an underdog, uh, but but I was like, hmm, maybe maybe there's an angle that I could play with here, and 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 run with that, that other the other ones won't run with. They they could out dog me on on bike skills at the time, but I had the notion that I'll I go bigger, but you know, so be it. That's yeah. uh, you take your angle and you run. Uh, sponsorship was at times phenomenal, at other times pulling teeth. There was, there was times where, where you, you would ha have done what you needed to do in a contract and, and, and you wouldn't be getting paid for what you had done. The worst sponsorship situation I ever ran into was one of my deals was uh, said upon the notion that if I re-signed, I would get paid. So I jump ship. It's, it can be tough to get paid. Uh, you're, not, you're not necessarily an employee that's, that it comes easy to. Uh, there's there's some, some really awesome players in the industry. I, I really liked working with, with some of the, the straight shooters, like Bryson from Marzocchi was one of those guys and, and amongst uh, Rob Roscoff, Santa Cruz uh, was was some of the the ultimate. Uh, they they just knew what was going on. I met the Drop In Boys in at the Vancouver uh, Bike Show, and that's that was that sort of s sealed up a uh, a relationship. Living on the bus was was pure hilarity. There was. Every time it drove, we would call it a waterfall because all of our stuff would just fall off the bunks. We would wake up sometimes and there would just be mountains of, of, of empty kokanees just everywhere. So we would, we, would, we would go through bottles of Febreze because it was the only way to cleanse the bus. So you would just douse everything in Febreze. We, we spent the majority of our money on, on liquor. We would go to the bar and there would be open bar tabs and, uh, and then there would be no f money left for food. So when we'd roll into a new RV park with the drop-in bus, the, there would often be people on the front bumper for some reason, uh, the best idea, to surf the front bumper. There would be someone behind the bus on a rope on a skateboard. There might be some people on the roof. The, we would have possibly turned the music down, but quite often forgot. The, 
the, the ruckus was for real, and, and quite often they just take one look at us and go, "You guys aren't staying here." Yeah, we wanted to act like we were rock stars, but we were peasants. We got paid. Uh, the fruit was not low hanging on the tree. You know, I mean, it, no wonder we didn't get paychecks back in the day. They were very good because we were a bunch of dirtbag punks. Um, nowadays, uh, you got to be a little more professional. You can't, uh, to the point even that maybe some of the young guys like wouldn't drink 10 kokanees and ride the next day. Drop in, put, put mountain biking in, in the front seat. It, it put it in the bar. It put it in, in front of the masses to the point where, where you couldn't go out and have a beer without someone talking to you that all of a sudden there's fame in our sport. Uh, there, like I, before that, I never knew the notion that, that fame could exist in our ex sport and that we weren't more, more than a fringe. And when drop-in came out, all of a sudden we were, we were in people's living rooms. Uh, and people, people that didn't know mountain biking's living rooms. For me, it was hard to be uh, popular. I, I don't know that I particularly need that. I struggled with my friendships with the fame because I probably changed. Uh, and at the end of the day, I, I, to be totally honest, uh, it, it messed with me more, more than it messed with everyone else, even though I would have thought that it was, was changing my relationships because of everyone else. It was probably more me. Uh, and I, I, at the time, I was young and probably a little driven to, to be a celebrity, even though uh, I didn't know what I really wanted. And, and it was just easy to, it, it came from a notion of a need for freedom. And, and I, was, I was coming out of some kind of adolescent angst with the drive for freedom. And, and I expressed it through mountain bikes. And at some point before some of my bigger injuries, I was, I was getting haunted by, by fright. And, and that sort of was, was uh, the coming uh, collision with, with, with um, breakage. Injury-wise, there, there was a, a tibia break, extreme ankle break where I broke the ankle joint uh, along with uh, four bones in my foot. Um, I eventually had another foot break, uh, and then there was finger finger breakage, which finger breakage is terrible. And it's you know when you tell a sponsor that you're broken because of your pinky, it's uh, it's the worst injury that you've ever had. Then I broke a femur, and that's another story too. But the pinky was the worst because you just can't explain a broken pinky. When the femur went down, I had uh, driven to back to here, to Abbotsford, from Kamloops for my grandma's funeral. And I had left this, the filming shoot while we were, were digging the jumps. And the guys had downed a tree on, on one of the landings. And, and I didn't even know that stump was there, but I, I probably collided with it. Uh, but all around, I just wasn't really fit to be hucking uh, at that day. Uh, so I went back to film and, and I just, I wasn't settled. I, I was like lacking sleep. I had just dealt with my, my grandma's passing and, and I, there was an error that was, was off. And when the air is off, and the problem is quite often you still jump and maybe on a different day, there wouldn't have been a problem. But, uh, I ended up face down with my left, left femur broken and Mitch uh, Cheek came running up. He was first on the scene and, and he had broken a femur and I looked up and he was very green in the face. And I was like, hey Mitch, is my left leg on my right shoulder? And he kind of just nods. And I was like, oh, this is not good. And, uh, and I actually ended up rolling over Onto, on, from my face down, I ended up rolling over and, and taking my leg. I, was, I had felt no pain at this point, and I straightened my leg out. And then and now I was sitting with my leg straightened out and just sitting comfortably. But anyone who's ever gone through these, these types of breaks uh, knows 
how, how interesting and how maybe how clear you are when you're first broken, when your body puts the chemicals in place. Uh, it's, it's, if you can remember the moment, it's, it's kind of special. Uh, the clarity, uh, the lack of pain, the euphoria was actually quite blissful uh, until, the, until the pain showed up like 15 minutes later. I didn't know it was the end of my career, but shortly after I did. Uh, things changed. I was, uh, at the end of the, my riding career, I was like a, a, a broken, damaged individual that, that maybe felt numbed and, and, uh, and, and had sort of lost my, what, what like had driven me there in the first place. If, if freedom had, had pushed me into mountain biking in the first place, I had ended up in an iron prison at the end. The end of my career was when I went to Whistler shortly after, still thinking that I was gonna pursue mountain biking. And I ended up getting, um, I was in a victimized brain state. And because of which, I believe that I brought a moment into my life where I, where I uh, was attacked and stabbed, actually, in a bar scene. I, I do think that we, we bring either the hero energy into our realm or maybe the zero energy into our realm. After I got <laughs> discharged from getting sutured, uh, and I had lost a bike that night uh, because it, anyway, in the alteration, I, the police officer, had, I, we tried to find my bike, and then I was like, hey, I really have nowhere to stay because I got a hammock in the bushes, so I'm just gonna go there. And I, I slept for like 14 hours because I was quite concussed. And I woke up, and the first thing I ran into was one of my, my best buds. Uh, this was Worcester Crankworks uh, walking through the village and part of me wanted to keep, to, to just run and go home. But the other part was like, hey, I'm at Crankworks. Let's, uh, let's hang out and let's overcome, overcome the spell that, 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 that has stricken me. And, 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 and I had woken up enough to know that, that I was incomplete and I had work to do. And, and it, that it was a spiritual journey that, that took three years to put myself back together. And, and so, so I, don't, I don't like feel bad about, uh, about the incident happening. Uh, it was the best moment of my life because it, it sort of made me like reassess my life and, uh, and maybe start recovering from just living in a more holistic way to heal, uh, to, to, to get back to, to square one, which is my holistic happy self. I, I grew up as a milker on a farm. I wasn't gonna keep milking teats. Uh, you know, if, if I always had the notion that if I, if I could uh, rekindle the fire and, and have the passion that I once had to, to be engaged, that I could get back into it, but but it just that that dream hasn't hasn't really shot back into my my perspective quite yet. Uh, after leaving biking was maybe the best dream job that I've had, and the it was a little tough to go back to the day job. But at this point, I, I, a good honest day's work is uh, to me great, and and I'm I'm pretty happy doing whatever. So we do odd jobs. We we take down trees here and there. I've, I've worked, I've managed a bike shop. Um, I've, I've done different things. Uh, I, I'm pretty open to doing work. So if uh, maybe form a business in the future, would love to like sell beer and kombucha out of my truck. I just feel like I'm ready to do anything again. I feel maybe back to where I started, where, where it's uh, catch a dream. Uh, you know, it's uh, maybe fall in love again. Maybe, maybe go jump a bike. Uh, I, I feel like there's a, a strings of potential, and there's there's golden strings that I can grab. And you know, I just live a humble life, but uh, go have some fun. <laughs>